following episode of the Comics and Crypto podcast is for informational purposes only, and anything expressed by the hosts or their guests is solely their opinion. This podcast does not constitute financial advice, and anyone wishing to invest should seek their own independent financial or professional help. Have fun, and enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Sean O'Hare, and I know comics. Hi, I'm Spencer Vogel, and I know crypto. Hi, I'm Kevin Lee Loader, and I don't know shit. This is the Comics and Crypto Podcast. Comics and Crypto, Crypto and Comics, Collectors World in a Digital Age. Comics and Crypto, Crypto and Comics is where the next billionaires will be rich. Comics and Crypto. What is going on, VV fam? Thanks so much for joining today. We are here with the amazing Ali from Elite Comics 11. What's up, Ali? Hey, Sean. What's up? Great to be here. <laughs> today we are talking about physical comic books and grading and why it's significant differentiating value has been very significant over the past 10 to 15 years and it's becoming more and more evident yeah so i mean yeah definitely comic grading has definitely changed the industry in the physical world so uh it's it's something that's relatively new but wow what a you know what a what a force it's become in the market physical comic grading is important because there's some subjectivity regardless like grading standards but there's always some subjectivity um between grades and just the grading process so you know if you really want to treat a collectible as like something that has a known value uh, a lot of people see the value and the market sees a value in having a third party neutral third party actually that has the expertise to grade actually weigh in and like settle the issue essentially and preserve the book in a way that, you know, we know that the book that's inside is what they graded and, and we know the grade. And then also just, you know, it goes without saying that once these books are encapsulated, the idea is that they're protected. So you don't have to like worry about a corner getting dinged or this or that, or can I take this safely here and there? I mean, you still need to worry to some extent, but nothing near as much as you need to worry about if, if you know, a raw comic, if you keep it raw, I mean, it can still be bent in half, right? Like if you put it, if you put it in some plastic with a backboard, bad things can easily still happen. So that's 100%. one thing. But then, you know, going back to like just the market in general, we've moved to a point with graded comics where, you know, these books, especially some of the, you know, like Bronze Age books or even modern books, they're really treated like commodities. Like they're graded. We know what the grades are. We have tons of sales data. We can trend the, you know, we can look at the market trends and we can actually feel pretty comfortable with data to support it about how much we think it's worth. And so grading kind of eliminates a lot of that subjectivity. And it's like kind of created like, you know, a new form of the comic place market, a newer Absolutely. form. It's been a few years. I mean, obviously it's been a few years now. So that's has really been a thing. And it's so important to understand like what it is you're buying, like you mentioned, right? So yeah. I was over at, we at Comic-Con and that was such a, a great time. And I remember what going over to, I think it was uh, either Comics Connect or Heritage Auction. They had a bunch of comics on display and they had some purple label, which is basically means restoration uh, to the, it was under the comic. Mm -hmm. Some of them had trimmed edges, mm -hmm. which breaks my heart because it kind of just ruins the comic. Would you be able to give some context on what trimming is? Yeah, so that's the other thing. And, and this was this is also part about this is speaks to the actual grading and the subjectivity. This isn't really a subjectivity issue. There's restoration. So restoration, like especially in the you know, the with the vintage comics, back in the day, more than now, like people used to actually um want to if there was a defect on their book, like it got scraped or it got damaged, they would actually think it would be a good idea to actually just make their comic like try to repair their comic or restore their comic. So they would do things like add in some color if there was a scrape or if there was a color break, add color in. You're talking about trimming. Well, that was another technique. If you look at a book, um, you know, let's just say this. This is, you know, just a raw comic here. If it was a vintage comic here, here's a better example. If you look at a book here, here's, this is the first appearance of Obi-Wan, by the way. But if this sometimes like, some damage would happen along like this paper edge and then you know especially and it still happens today but some people would actually just essentially just cut the book 
to make it have a smooth edge again, to get rid of some of that unevenness. And so that's trimming. And sometimes that can be very minute. Like maybe they only took like a really, just a sliver and just cut it straight all the way down. So it looked better, but that's considered restoration. And that has a huge impact on the value of a comic in the current marketplace. So grading, when they grade comics for you, these grading companies, they are definitely looking for restoration such as trimming, which is really hard. It's really hard to detect, especially in vintage books, because nowadays we know there's pretty, there's a lot of consistency when comics are manufactured, but back in the day, there were inconsistencies that were actually consistent. So like if a book was a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, sometimes that was just part of the production process. So that's not necessarily just because you see variants, that doesn't mean necessarily that there's trimming. So there's this whole art to trimming. It is the most difficult restoration to detect. Yeah. And so just a bit of a background for the, for the actual uh, slabs themselves. There's essentially three different types. I, mm-hmm. I think there's a couple of a couple more, but the three main ones are uh, blue label, purple Universal. label, yeah. Yeah, and a green label. So there's blue label, universal, that means there's no restoration. There's green label, that means that there's some defect on the book that they essentially isolate by saying, we're going to give it a qualified grade. We're going to identify what the defect is that we're going to basically not count for grading purposes. And then we're going to grade it as if it didn't have that defect that we were pointing out. And then the, you know, there's also the purple label and we're talking, this is CGC, by the way, the CGC slabs. Uh, this is the color scheme. The purple label means that there's restoration on the book. What's the process like to actually get your book graded? And I know there's two different companies, CGC and CBCS, and we could dive a little bit into the difference between the two as well. Yeah. So you guys pick up these raw books and you want to protect them. You want to find out, you know, you want to ensure they're authentic and not restored, or maybe you just want to know what you have basically. So you take this raw book and you want to get it graded. There are the two big companies are CGC, CBCS. There are other grading companies, but we'll focus on CGC and CBCS for this, um, for this talk. So um, yeah. So what do you do? Well, the first step is you definitely, you know, those grading companies, they're going to require you to uh, give them a value for insurance purposes. Like how much is your book worth? And, you know, based on how much you think it's worth, um, that's going to determine how much they are going to charge you, how much insurance they're going to put on it when you send it into them. Cause you'll have to send these books to the grading company and have it graded, obviously. So the first process is actually, you know, you want to try to attempt to grade these books as they sit. Like, what do you think they're, what the grade is? And you might need some advice for that. So it's definitely, it's good to be part of the comic community, right? You wanna, you know, get relationships with people that can kind of help you out, learn the ropes. There's also resources we can share, Sean, about grading standards and guidelines that are online. But um, once you do that, you're going to have to you're going to have to choose a value that you think your book is worth and then you're going to fill that out send it into the grading company um but then there's also this and I don't know if we want to get into this right now but there's this question of whether or not your book could be improved by services um techniques uh we'll call pressing and cleaning so pressing in a nutshell is we'll apply weight we'll apply pressure to a book, maybe that can take out some wrinkles that don't break color or just wrinkles in general, make a book lay flat. It could take out, you know, creases, bends, stuff like that. And then there's cleaning. Like what if your if your book has some dirt on it that can be removed, then there's some cleaning techniques that you can do without using chemicals that can actually, you know, improve the final grade. So you want to do that obviously. You want to do those techniques if they're going to help your grade before you get these books sent in and graded. So it's something that um, you definitely want to, you know, you want to assess the potential for that before you send it to the company. But uh, once you have made, once you have basically estimated a grade and a value, now you basically, you go on their website, the CGC or CBCS, there's a form to fill out. You send it to them, depending on, 
how high of a value your book is or different like time schedules for the book to be expected to come back to you graded. They keep you updated via email. And then you get this slab comic come back to you after that whole process is done and you find out what the grade is. And that's, that's kind of in a nutshell how it works. To my knowledge, the uh, pressing and grading technique was actually, was that considered restoration at one point? Yeah. When you say considered restoration, you got to be a little, I mean, what do you mean? Like by the grading companies or exactly by, by, by the grading yeah. company where they give a purple label or a, a restoration label because of uh, pressing and cleaning. My understanding is no, they okay. didn't. I, think, uh, cool. I don't think they've ever taken that position, but I think like the comic collecting community in general before rating companies or even during even <laughs> maybe even now, some people out there, <laughs> do consider it to be restoration because it's like, you know, I, you know, we're talking about the grading companies and just the general belief in the marketplace is no pressing and cleaning is not restoration, but I can, yeah. I mean, there's an argument you're restoring the book because it's been like creased or, you know, whatever. So, I mean, I get that, but the grading companies don't treat it that way. And the, the, the guy, yeah. So let's just leave it at that for these purposes. It's a much needed death. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know it, it's it's been amazing to see uh, a lot of comic books especially bigger grails and keys seeing them get get uh, pressed and cleaned and going from like a 3-0 grade or to like a 5-0 or even 6-0 grade or even double yeah. it's it's happened and we're talking this is a lot like, of money it's a lot it's, of money it's, it's a crazy. lot of difference the money yeah. even between on some books the difference between you know a 2.0 2 and a 2.5 I mean, it could be, I mean, sky's the limit, tens of thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars. Yeah. It's not always just a couple hundred bucks or something. It's a huge deal. People that are, are doing this process, it's such a, a very delicate technique because if you don't know what you're doing or if you're not a, a professional, you could screw up the comic. Yeah, you and definitely. Then then, so. And so we should put that out there too. We talked about pressing and cleaning briefly. Pressing and cleaning is an art form. Um, there are a lot of people that are offering services to do it. You really need to know who's doing the work and just make sure that they are not, you know, that they're treating those books the same way they treat their own. So definitely be careful out there. Uh, cheapest does not always mean best. It usually doesn't mean best. So keep that in mind. Um, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Going through with an independent, I've done that as well. Actually, I've gone with Elite Comics 11. I know that you've done that in the past as well, and it, it turned out really great. Um, but I know we CGC... do pressing and cleaning for specifically, like at least currently as we're recording this, like high end books, like really high value. And that's not just that's not like an elitist view. It's just a resource issue. We yeah, wish yeah. we could do more. But right now we're so busy with the page. It's, yeah, we had to limit it. But there are tons of really amazing pressers out there. So it's not just us by any means. There's a lot of options, but just be careful. And at the very minimum, you could always go through CGC and CBCS as well. That's an option that is included when you send it off to get great, the, the comment to get graded. So CCS is actually like, you know, they work with CGC like to do, they offer pressing services. So you could actually, it's basically on the same form, you can elect to have, you know, CCS work on a book before it basically is walked over to CGC and, and graded. So it's kind of like, an, it's like, you know, they're basically technically, I think they're separate companies, but they work together really closely. So it's kind of one in the same in that sense. Um, but they're, they're really, they're good. Um, they're really good at restoration removal, like, cause they're very conservative about it and they'll screen your books for restoration so that's really uh, you know that's a really good insight there and you know if you have a book that has restoration and you are considering getting it, getting it removed i would highly recommend ccs do a screening with them and they, they've had great results for me personally so that's very cool very cool and now a word from our sponsor looking to buy or sell physical comics then check out elite comics 11 Instagram's number one community-powered comic sales page. Elite Comics 11 is our favorite place to safely buy and sell comics. They are a CGC and CBCS authorized dealer and sell a variety of comics 
from Silver Age Grails to modern day keys. Inventory is updated daily, and don't forget to check out their incredible almost daily live stream comic sales. The next time you're looking to buy or sell physical comics, make sure you turn to Elite Comics 11. Follow at Elite underscore Comics 11 on Instagram and see what all the buzz is about. And along with Blue Label, Purple Label, Green Label, there's also with CGC a yellow label, which basically is 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 witness signatures mm-hmm. i remember i remember my my first comic investment was avengers 196 the first appearance of taskmaster and it had two signatures on it but i wanted to get david michelini's uh signature as well so i it was interesting because i've heard nightmare stories and actually spencer from the podcast he actually cracked a 98 recently sent it off to get graded and uh, because it was signed um but he got it back as a 96 and that happens so it's a gamble guys it's never a guarantee that you're going to get that same grade back sometimes you actually get a bump as well if you have like a 90 you, sometimes you get a 92 and 94 but i was fortunate enough to get back as so i was a 98 originally i got it signed and then it came back as a 98 so i was very blessed very lucky but that's why i, I always for me as an option getting it pressed and clean is super important um but diving in deeper into signatures yeah that's something that i i personally love i know it's a it's a hit or miss with them on the comic book community, <laughs> but those who really love the signatures do pay for a premium. Yeah. So, yeah. So signatures, there's definitely there, you know, there are definitely people that like are signature people and they pay cre- crazy premiums for signatures. And there's other people that they're not as big of a fan about it, but it is important because it is definitely a, a big part of the market. So there's, the two grading companies that we're talking about cgc and cbcs they treat signatures very differently so so let's start with cgc so cgc you know you see behind me there's a neil adams yellow label we'll just use this example here this is an amazing this is an amazing (laughs) fantasy 15 for spider-man um it's graded by cgc it actually has the the stan label how awesome stan um but anyway so you see this yellow label that means that it was a witness signature so this means um somebody had this comic raw has stan sign it and while it was being signed there was actually a cgc facilitator on site that took possession of the book after stan lee signed it and sent it straight to grading um it never left cgc's hands or their facilitator's hands before it was graded so they were more than happy to actually authenticate the signature because they witnessed it. So this, this indicates a witness signature. And that's the only way that you can, I mean, at least there's one caveat, but that's the only way that you can get a yellow label CGC slab generally. Now there was this thing with Todd McFarlane where they did something a little different with certificates on a specific uh, couple of releases, I believe. But other than that, you actually have to have a CGC facilitator there to do the, uh, during the signing. And then they take possession of the book afterwards and you get it back when it's in one of these slabs. Um, that's so cool. That's, that's the only way to, to get CGC to uh, uh, verify a signature. That's so awesome. CBCS is different, but that's CGC. Happy birthday, Spider-Man. Happy right? birthday, Spider-Man. Happy yeah. birthday, Spider-Man. That's epic. You know, signature placement is so important too. And that is really an awesome yeah great placement for the signature it doesn't take up too much of the art i know a lot of a lot of artists are very sensitive about that uh, where they sign because they don't want to take up you know covering much of the art I, i've even seen a four this is a very fortunate story i've seen a fantastic 452 the first appearance of black panther it was a 9.2 or 9.4 grade and stanley signed over the black panther's face yeah, a lot of uh, signatures, you know, Stan, definitely guilty of that. He, he sent, signed over faces, um, text boxes, like, you know, I mean, I think for the most part, the face is probably the worst thing, except once I did yeah. see a signature that was actually signed upside down, which that, <laughs> that was oh, all wrong. Oh, my gosh. That was oh, a big no. book, too. Uh, um, but then there's also other things like, you know, some people are not fans of, and I, I get this, like having one creator sign another creator's book like if mm. the if the signee doesn't have anything to do with the book 
you probably, you know, don't want to have that signature on, on a valuable book uh, generally. Um, but, uh, you know, Stan Lee belongs on Amazing Fantasy 15, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm really good. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, and interesting, as far as like the value of signatures, I think Stan Lee is probably the most valuable for the comic book world. Would you agree? Um, I think, uh, yeah. I mean, that, it depends on the book. Stan Lee signed a lot of stuff. So Stan Lee signed a lot of stuff. He was definitely around for the CGC witness signatures. Um, but he's not, he's by no means even close to a scarce signature. Um, maybe Stan Lee on a big book like this, you know, that doesn't grow on trees, but he signed a lot of stuff. Um, one person I do want to, his, his colleague, Jack Kirby, much more, much different story. So this Fantastic Four number one, it's a blue label, but it's double signed. Why is it double signed? It's because obviously it wasn't witnessed by CGC. So CGC is not going to verify the signatures. And if you notice, there's no signatures on the on the cover. So if we look at the label and it's mirrored, but it says jack kirby in quotes and stanley written on the first page in pen so if we Incredible. actually looked at the first page of this book that's in here it is signed by jack kirby and stanley so i wanted to bring this up for two reasons one to show you that if you send in a book that wasn't witnessed was signed but not witnessed by cgc they'll give you this designation will tell you what's going on but they don't necessarily authenticate it all right um but they'll give you this notation so this is what happens and if it's on the first page like this cgc doesn't ding the grade for that you know unwitnessed signature or signatures so it's kind of like a little nuance there if these unwitnessed signatures had been on the cover cgc would ding it they would basically treat it, they would treat the unwitnessed signatures as essentially writing on the cover. And so this book, if it had those signatures on it, I mean, it could be something like a like a five or a 4.5 instead of a 5.5. And I realize this is mirrored, but you guys get the idea. But this Jack, <laughs> anyways, the second point here was Jack Kirby, obviously a huge comic creator with a huge piece of the history um much more hard to find jack kirby signatures than stanley signatures he generally as far as i know like i mean he 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 signed on the first page right i think there's a few examples of like signatures on the cover but they're kind of oddballs with him you're generally going to find him only on the first page and then with this whole concept of cgc only authenticating um you know, witness books. Well, Jack Kirby throws a wrench, and Jack Kirby and earlier creators throws a wrench in that in, in the sense that Jack Kirby passed away before CGC was even doing that. So there's no example of a yellow label Jack Kirby um, signature. So you pretty much only get blue labels if you use CGC. So that's one kind of, you know, just issue to think about there um, versus let's talk about cbcs now cbcs you have a raw book cgc you didn't use a cgc facilitator they weren't there when it got signed maybe you bought it raw and it was already signed and you want to have it authenticated well you can't use cgc for that because they're not going to authenticate it because they didn't witness the signature but sean i think you have an example right of a cbcs book where they actually authenticated after the fact so this is a giant size x-men one and this comic is signed by this is a cbcs label and it's signed by herb trump and len ween and stan lee and who else is on here chris claremont and roy thomas so they all signed it i actually so i, I bought it before roy thomas and chris claremont signed it but there was a special signing and i had the book cracked so mm -hmm. they both could sign it together so i have all five of the signatures since they all were part of this comic and it was really cool i mean it's it's has a combination of verified and also witness signatures. Mm -hmm. So that means, so the witness obviously means somebody from CBCS or CBCS facilitator would have been there to see the actual 
signing. And then the verified CBCS actually has its own internal process. I think it's using like digital technology and then also like, you know, I think manpower as well to verify signatures. So um, you have that option. Whereas with CGC, unless it's a witness signature, you are not going to get the yellow label uh, that we know as to mean a witness signature. That's another issue is so when you crack that book, so this is kind of a, you know, words for the wary out there, like avoid this pitfall is if, the, if I crack this book and CGC wasn't around just because I'm going to a convention or something, I, I crack it because I want to add a signature. If I do that and I send it to CGC afterwards, like I'm not going to get this yellow label slab again. Like I'm going to lose the verification of Stanley's signature. So you do not want to do that. If you want to, if you if you own a yellow label CGC book, you want to make sure that you you know work with a CGC facilitator if you want to add if you want to open the book and add any signatures because it's kind of like a chain of custody issue. Like as long as it stays within CGC or CGC's agents like possession, they'll go ahead and honor the original uh, witness uh, verification as well. But you don't want to break that up by just doing it yourself. Like, trust me, that would be horrible. Versus yeah. with CBCS, you got options. Cause if you, if you crack that right now and you know, you had some other artists sign it, you could just send it back into CBCS and they could just use their verification process on all the signatures again. And, and they would totally do that, you know? So, so yeah, you got more options with the signatures there. Yeah. And that's the gamble, right? I mean, I could do that. Um, but going through the process that you mentioned earlier, it would still retain this label and all the signature verifications and witnesses um, beforehand. So that's kind of important. And there's definitely different options, guys. I mean, you could send in the, the CGC and CBS have private signings. And you could send in your comic. Typically, I found that those those uh, signings are a bit expensive. <laughs> they definitely pay premium because there's a lot going on. But also you can go in person at comic book shows. And usually CBCS and or CGC is there to help you get your uh, comic sent off directly at, at that location or at that show. So that's usually the route that I like to go because I like to, you know, have the comic in my own hands until I can finally just like give it to somebody to send off for grading. <laughs> yeah. When you send it off for a, a private signing, it just exchanges a lot of hands and it's, you just don't know. I mean, accidents happen. It, it, it's all part of the process and it's kind of scary, especially for a book like this one or your, your uh, AF-15. So, yeah, there's, there's one little nuance. And, you know, I don't know how many people are actually interested in this nuance, but you just showed that CBCS book. CBCS used to give a red label for verified signatures and a yellow label for witness signatures. Now they've moved to just give yellow labels for signatures. And then they say if it's verified or witnessed. So if you were on your own and you crack that book right now, Sean, some of those signatures are witnessed, some are verified. But if you if you crack that open on your own and send it in, like when it comes back, like I think all those signatures would come back as just verified, not witnessed anymore. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's another thing, right? So when you when you get signatures on a comic, you send it off, you get it graded, then you realize, oh, there's other opportunities for other artists. Uh, but you have to get that book comic cracked and go through the process all over again. That mm -hmm. includes the time that it takes to get it graded and also the money that you have to spend to get it graded. So yeah, maybe we could that's dive into actually, that That's bit. actually a topic that, you know, I, we, we kind of jumped the ship a little bit. Like the first step to deciding, you know, to how to grade a car, or getting your comic grading is deciding whether or not it's even worth paying the expense to like get your comic graded. So that's kind of a, a personal choice, let's say, but it definitely involves the value for most people. You know, if, you know, grading comics, especially if you have to press and clean them, or if you do press and clean them before you get them graded, I mean, the bills add up and the time it takes a significant amount of time. So for most people, unless it's like some personal keepsake, they really make a financial decision uh, whether or not their book is worth incurring this extra expense. And so that's what, you know, a lot of people that are new to this, they'll go online and they'll be like, oh, wow, that book, I had that when I was a kid. Like it's selling for $300 in a 9.8. 
Well, chances are your copy at home that you had when you were a kid on with it where it's like a 9.6 or 9.4. So it's not exactly what you're seeing on eBay or whatever. And then the other thing is whoever actually got it graded, they incurred a lot of expense. Like that's not all profit that they're going to get when you buy it for $300. You know, they spent probably over a hundred dollars to like do the whole process. So that's exactly. built into that price tag. As far as signatures, you know, with the process of going about it, there's, there, is this a collector's item or is this an investment? Mm -hmm. So for me, I have a comic book that I'm really a big fan of is it's a 501 variant of house of slaughter number one. And I know at New York comic-con, they're the artists and also James Tynan are going to be there. Mm -hmm. So that's a good example, right? That I can, I know that I, both of those signatures I can get in one location mm -hmm. and I can send it off directly from there. Right. So it's, it's, that's another part of the process to think about is game planning, finding opportunities. You don't need to just jump the gun if you think there's going to be other opportunities, but that's the advantage that CBCS gives. You can get multiple signatures and just have them verified later on, which is really, really cool. Cause I definitely have a few James Tynan comics that, I plan to also get signed by the artist, but I haven't sent them off yet because I like I decided, you know, I'll just get them verified by CBCS. Yeah, no, that's a great service that CBCS offers. And there's no equivalent currently with CGC. And I mean, I understand. I mean, you know, there's nothing better than anything that's witnessed directly, right? But, um, you know, so that's there's definitely that nuance between the two when it comes to grading signature books um because you know you go into a comic shop or a show and you see a signed book and you know you don't want to get dinged for it like if it's on the cover right like you know it's, if it's real then you want to make it just you know actually be acknowledged as something that shouldn't hurt the grade i mean i get that part but um you know Definitely. companies draw their lines and they do things the way that they feel and you know, CGC has done great with the signature series. People really covet that. And, uh, but CBCS gives you more options on that front. Absolutely. And I get a lot of questions from me about whether I just click Marvel comics. I actually have this one that is, there's no context. I just want to show it real quick. <laughs> so, Cause I'm excited about it. I love this series so much. It's called lady killer. This is going to be turned into a show on Netflix mm. and yeah. And Blake lively is going to star. Very oh. excited for, and yeah, I'm very excited for the series. This, the comic was actually written by Noelle Jones, who, if, if you know from the VB community, probably knows, recognizes that name because she's designed a lot of the digital collectibles on, on VB. And she actually, it's really cool is right here. This, uh, she signed her name and it's also in red. Yeah. So, yeah, which it really symbolizes the comic because it's very violent. <laughs> <laughs> 1950s housewife uh, is a hit, hitman for the mafia. <laughs> that's an interesting cool. concept cool is it in Super production cool. already uh yeah i believe so because they've they've announced it like a year and a half two years ago but who knows if covid maybe put a little stint in that but this okay, is the fun. emerald city comic-con variant so this is considered one of the more rare variants you see her you see the the space needle in the background and then right behind her a big smile on her face and she's a bloody butcher's knife right behind her yeah it's a really fun series it's only a five issue comic well, how many flashbacks have we done now where you like pointed out books you picked up way ahead of the curve? So <laughs> <laughs> you can add that to the list, probably. <laughs> so to, to, to wrap this video up, Ali, uh, is there any piece of advice, like maybe one singular piece of advice that you would give new comic book investors uh, when it comes to getting your comics graded? Um, well, there's a, you know, I think we covered most of them. I think at a basic level, uh, especially if you're dealing with vintage books, um, you know, I think just more like the I think we've covered the grading and then the pressing and cleaning to some extent. Those are all the, the pressing and cleaning. Again, just be careful with who's working on your books. Don't always go with the cheapest option. Ask for references or referrals, reviews, stuff like that. It's with it like with anything else. Be careful there. Also. If you're interested in grading, that means you have raw books. If you're picking up raw books, make sure that you're buying them from dealers that will actually like, you know, back up what they're selling. Um, and I say this because we sell a lot of comics on Elite Comics 11. I mean, we we've out. I mean, we back every deal that happens on our page at our live shows or whatever. And I mean, you can feel confident about that because we'll back it. 
and we're not going anywhere and our reputation speaks for itself. But that doesn't mean like every place is going to handle things that same way. So just be careful with that. Things to be aware of, like count the pages. We're talking about grading, but like what if a book's missing a page? Like that can totally throw off your grade. You'll get a 0.5 instead of a numerical grade. Um, so that is something that people overlook often. And then the restoration detection you know, it kind of goes, it speaks to having a guarantee on what you're buying from whoever you're buying it from. Like, you know, if you buy a 9.0 that you think is unrestored and then all of a sudden it's trimmed or it has color touch, like that's a huge loss of value. Um, so just try to detect that up front. There's different techniques to detect that. Like a black light, for example, if you shine a black light on color touch, usually it will pop so you can detect it. But like we talked about earlier, there's other restorations such as trimming. It's really hard to detect, even if you know what you're doing. So, um, you know, just be wary out there. I think the best thing to do, especially for new people, is don't just think that all the avenues to buy comics are the same. They are not. Ask for references. Ask for, like, people's reputation stuff like that. Um, you know. And I guess on a bias note, definitely feel good that if you buy anything on Elite Comics 11, we are going to back it 100%. I love that. And so everyone out there knows, I mean, I've, I've been buying and selling from or with Elite Comics 11 for quite some time, for at least a couple of years now. I got some of my first comics from Elite Comics 11. And yeah. you know, even when I sell, you know, I'll come in, I'll say, hey, what do you think of this price? And they say, well, here's the data. Here's the data. So, you know, either back that or we got to tweak it a little bit. But I appreciate that so much because you just literally the, the, the do your own research. You know, you guys do your own research so well. And that's something that I want to emphasize again to the to our viewers is you've got to do your own research. You've got to really understand what it is. If you're collecting, you just collect what you love, right? But if you're trying to make money from this, if you're trying to make an investment, you've got to do your own research. You've got to really dive into this space and really understand what you're, you're getting into. Um, yeah. Especially, and then, especially, one, one more thing, Sean, though, just before I forget is like, Okay. And today, especially if you are looking to like, you know, do this for profit, like you, you definitely want to get, you want to get er the best grade possible. So you don't want to be like, this book looks almost perfect. I'm just going to submit it. If you get like a nine, four, when you could have got a nine, eight, that's like a huge loss in value. And then you're going to have somebody probably buy your slab and then just detect that it could have been pressed. And then they're just going to do it themselves after they buy it from you. And they could make four times more money that you could have had if you actually didn't just skip pressing and cleaning. So you should definitely make sure pressing and cleaning is a huge part of the current marketplace. Yeah. Just so everyone out there knows, whenever whenever I get a book cracked, to either get signed and sent off, or if I ever just sent one off in general, I'll always get it pressed and cleaned, no matter what. Even if I'm at a, at, at you know a show and CG have to do it through CGC or CBCS, always get it pressed and cleaned because at least for me, it usually relatively gives you the best chance to get your comic either back the same grade or better. Um, and like for example, the example I mentioned earlier, the Avengers 196, which is the first appearance of Taskmaster, that was a 9.8 when I cracked it. But if it came back a 9.6, it only would have been a couple hundred dollars the mm -hmm. comic compared to a couple thousand plus. Like it's yeah. a huge difference in value, guys. So you got to be very careful about this. And um, yeah, so when you when you send it off, just make sure also, you know, is this is it worth getting graded? Sometimes there's newer comics, just maybe it's better just to hold on to it for now until the comic itself increases in value. But you got to ask yourself, why am I getting this graded? Is it important to me as a collector or an investor? Those are all things that you should really know before you dive deep into it because you're going to be spending a good amount of money to getting this stuff graded. And time. So and especially time. if you guys are out there trying to establish like some kind of comic business or if you just want to, if you really are doing this to make money off of whatever you picked up, like, you know, if you've been in this long enough, you definitely have tons of experience of like, you know, buying a raw book, getting it worked on, sending it for grading. And by the time it comes back, you kind of miss the window in terms of potential profit you could have had just because it took too long or cost too much. Um, so, yeah, as you get more experience, you'll be like, hey, this is a cool book, but I'm probably just going to keep it raw or sell it raw instead of graded just because it's just not it's not I can't really justify that expense or that delay.
Yeah. And this all comes with experience yeah. and the time that you put into this research. So yeah. Ali, thanks so much for coming on the show today. I had such an amazing time. This is, <laughs> this is, and this is a topic I definitely want to jump back into more. Oh yeah. The, no, it's, it's great as always. And yeah, this, we, we touched on topics that honestly they, they can each have their own segment. So there's so much there, but it was a good overview. I was just thinking the same thing. Come back and dive into each chapter and like giving full on examples. But yeah, we'll definitely say that for another time. And, and thanks again for everyone for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you on the next one.